thank you very much for having me here today. It's, it's a privilege and an honor to, to share my thoughts about um, employment and incarceration with this group. Um, as Sue said, I, I, I'm Michelle Sirocco. I'm the Chief Social Responsibility Officer at Televerde. Uh, and, and Televerde is a Phoenix-based company. We're headquartered just a couple miles from here. Um, and I've been with the company, as she said, for 20 years, um, actually 20 years this month. On the surface, Televerde is a sales and marketing company with over 600 employees. Um, we help small, medium, and large businesses get new customers. Um, and we work with really impressive companies like SAP, Adobe, Microsoft, and we've generated over $8 billion in revenue for those companies over the years. But it's the how we do it that really matters. 70% um, of our workforce are women who are incarcerated here in Arizona and in Rockville, Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Televerty was founded in 1994 based on the idea that providing women in prison with jobs, training, and education while they were incarcerated and after their release would help them to become financially independent and stay out of prison. That's right. The training that we provide these women is anything but easy. Many of the women who join Televerty have zero business experience and very limited education. In fact, the first thing that they have to do when they come to us is they have to get their GED in prison because that's the minimum level of education that we require for the women to work for us. Then the women go through a very rigorous six-week training program where they learn business acumen, technology, and IT infrastructure. This is not easy. This is a really tough course curriculum. And what we're doing is we're literally creating a pipeline of women in tech for the industry. By the time the training ends, the women are highly skilled in the most cutting edge technology and they've developed the skills necessary to communicate with senior level business executives about complex business challenges and technologies. But what's really impressive is the, the passion and the ability they have to deeply understand the business of our clients. Um, it's like it's nothing you've ever seen before. I'll regularly take our clients out there and after they meet their Televerde team in prison, they will tell me that the women of Televerde understand their business better than their own sales team. Yeah. The women literally transform into consummate, talented business professionals, and this is the cornerstone of the work that we do. But does our model work? Well, I am here to tell you that it does. Over the past 25 years, we have had over 3,000 women work for us. While Arizona's recidivism rate is almost 50%, for Televerde, it is less than 7%. Yeah. And this is because they've developed highly marketable skills that lead to meaningful and rewarding careers in sales, marketing, operations, IT, and HR, working for Televerde, working for our clients, and working for some of the top companies here in the Valley. In fact, in our corporate office, almost 50% of the 200 women who work for us started their career in prison. We have people in every department at every level of the organization, including 30% of our leadership team that started their career while they were in prison here in Perryville. In fact, I began my career with Televerde in prison in 1999. And have... <laughs> And I've now gone from cell block to C-suite. This is not something that happens easily. It happens with a model built on empathy, education, training, and opportunity. So how can we replicate the success of the Televerty business model for incarcerated men and women here in Arizona and all over the country? We need to turn our prisons into workforce development centers. And I believe there are three things necessary to make this happen. First, we need viable sentencing reform. There's been a lot of talk about this here in Arizona, thanks to groups like the AFSC, but we need to raise the awareness further. Because the stigma associated with the incarcerated is still strong, we need sentencing reform that people who are not on board can understand is actually in their own best interest. When we do that, then meaningful and long-lasting change can occur. 
We need sentencing reform that enables people to earn time off their sentence by participating in meaningful programs, including substance abuse, counseling, education, vocational training, and work programs. Programs that prepare and enable them to become productive members of society. Second, we need to ensure that we are providing people with advanced education and vocational training that builds marketable skills. You cannot come out of prison untrained, uneducated, and without opportunity and successfully build your, rebuild your life. I recently read a story that one state's plan to reduce recidivism was to prepare and provide inmates with unskilled jobs. This is not a sustainable solution. What we need is an empathetic system that delivers education, training, and opportunity so people can reach their full potential, realize their worth, and change the trajectory of their lives and their careers. Finally, we need to make sure people have real opportunity upon release. In a country where we are experiencing 4% unemployment, the lowest rate in 20 years, the 23 million people who've been convicted of a felony are experiencing a 25% higher unemployment rate. And it's even higher than that for women. It's as much as 40% for women who've been convicted of a felony. Nearly 700,000 people get released from prison every year. And as they reintegrate into our communities, they are deprived of employment opportunities and companies are deprived of really good talent. No one wins with this model. This is where businesses need to step up and start embracing fair chance hiring practices and begin seeing qualified felons as qualified applicants. We need all, it's time for all companies to ban the box and take SHRM's Getting Talent Back to Work pledge to consider all candidates. Yeah. We need more employers engaging in workforce development programs like Televerde and Hickman's Eggs programs that prepare people for jobs while they are incarcerated and then provide post-employment, post-release employment. Smart criminal justice reform requires more than bipartisan efforts. It requires everyone, government, nonprofit, and businesses to get involved in providing solutions that work. Solutions based on empathy, education, experience, and employment. Thank you all so much.